All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to tonight's meeting on the Levy Pond and Kappa Park site plan master plans for the city of Fife. Uh, as you know, this is a virtual public meeting. Um, and uh, my name is Chris Hoffman, and I will be moderating tonight's uh, public meeting. Uh, in a couple minutes, I'm going to turn it over to Jim McKay. Uh, I'm sorry, Jim Sandlin from McKay Sposito, who will uh, be walking through tonight's presentation. He's the landscape architect that has been working on these uh, site master plans. Uh, just wanted to go over a couple things before we get started. Um, we uh, will be doing some live polling uh, throughout the presentation. So want to get you familiarized with that concept. It will be pretty self-explanatory when we get to that point, um, but just wanted to give you a heads up about that. You also will have the opportunity um, at the end of the public meeting to ask some questions or make comments, and we'll be using the Q&A function, which is at the bottom of your screen um, that says Q&A. You can also use that throughout the presentation, especially during live polling, if you have additional comments you'd like to uh, tell us about. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim, who will kick off the meeting. Thank you very much, Chris, and thank you all for attending. Um, as Chris mentioned, we're, we're looking specifically at two parks within the city of Fife, Levy Pond, which is uh, partially developed currently, and then Kappa Park, which is an undeveloped property. Um, this is all part of an overall effort, um, or somewhat of a sub-effort to the pros plan that's been going on for the city of Fife as well. So, um, so tonight's focus is on these specific sites. Um, so just to give you a quick overview, uh, we're going to run through a presentation for Levy Pond, ask a few questions, a few polling questions and so forth, and then we'll move into Kappa Park and then provide an overall Q&A session and give you some updates for the next steps. And hopefully everything going smoothly, we'll give you back your time uh, by eight or potentially earlier. So. So the goals and objectives for this particular meeting are to provide you with a, beef, a brief background for each of the two park sites, uh, present master plan concept alternatives for each park site, and there are two alternatives for each of the two sites, uh, receive feedback and address questions from, the, from for each concept, and then with the main goal being hopefully being able to get some, gain some consensus to inform a final preferred master plan for each site after this meeting. So with that, I am going to jump right in and start with Levy Pond. Um, so as I mentioned, it's partially developed currently, uh, the context of the site, it's located in the Southeast section of Fife. Um, it's surrounded uses are, um, we have predominantly agricultural land to the east. We have a mobile home park to the north, uh, also some recycling facilities. Um, we have the Puyallup River to the south. And in general, there's not a lot of residential property around this. Um, some of the existing uses that are out there currently are by its namesake, there is a levee. Um, there is a stormwater pond, which uh, currently has a paved loop path around it, serving two purposes, one to uh, maintain the pond and one as a recreational use. Uh, there's current gravel access drive and parking to the facility. And then there's also a very large bermed area, um, probably resultant from having excavated to create the, the pond. And then it's consisting of a couple of different parcels, but the city, there's a city owned parcel to the west, which is currently being leased to the uh, recycling folks over here. And then portion of the site is being leased for agricultural purposes right now. So 
what we've done is taken a dive in to look at what are the opportunities and constraints for this site. Uh, obviously, we have to protect and maintain the levee. We have to protect and maintain the, the pond capacity and the functionality of that. Um, we are looking at, there's currently a project in the works for uh, extending 74th Avenue East, which starts to cut through the property. Um, there's an existing community garden that gets displaced at that point. So we're going to be looking at opportunities to re relocate that. Um, there is a stormwater, an additional stormwater facility that's gonna be required to accommodate the new roadway improvements coming around here as well. And then obviously we want to look at providing new access and parking and making sure that we're good neighbors and we're buffering uh, uses and noises and so forth from the adjacent uh, homeowners to the north. We have also done some preliminary surveying um, to find out what are the community desires for this site in terms of providing these updates. Um, Number one across the board was restrooms. Uh, we've also heard the community would like to see a playground at this site, uh, improve the landscape, planting and wildlife habitats, uh, provide some group shelters and, and or picnic areas, potentially an off leash dog area uh, and improve and expand upon the community gardens that are already out there. So having heard that, we came up with two alternatives. Uh, I'll go through the first one now. Uh, in this first alternative, we put together a program based on, on what we've heard. Um, essentially, this is just the overall site. We're, we're looking at providing new entryways into the park, improved parking, paved parking, uh, again, we mentioned relocating the community garden, and that would require some additional parking as well. Um, in this particular option, we're going to look at an option for an off leash area in the park. Uh, and then we want to take advantage of some of the views that are out there, um, creating more formal observation overlook areas and improving some of the, um, the existing amenities out there. So beginning with the, the kind of the entry plaza area, that would consist of, again, adding parking. We could see about approximately 30 spaces in there, uh, providing a group shelter, uh, kind of a plaza area, entry plaza area with a restroom, some site furnishings, and then take advantage of the topography and the space in this area to create uh, an interesting playground that is potentially going to be a, like a multi-level, take advantage of the berm that's out there to incorporate things like uh, slides and, and so forth. Lastly, uh, currently there's not ADA access to get to this, this uh, existing pathway around here. So we're going to make those improvements as we move forward with whatever solutions we come up with. So kind of giving you an idea, there's options that we'll be looking at for, for instance, for shelters. Um, the site itself is more naturalized feeling. There's uh, current use has um, observation of waterfowl, migratory birds, those types of things. We want to build off of that character to some degree, but we, we can kind of take it in varying degrees, um, keeping things more rustic or we're adding a little bit more contemporary flair to, um, to the furnishings and so forth, but through the use of appropriate materials and so forth, keeping that, that, that softer feel to the site. In terms of restrooms, um, there's, there's different approaches. We can go with pre-engineered structures, which reduce costs. They're already built to be ADA accessible. They're designed as public restrooms to be somewhat bulletproof. Um, but again, playing off of, if we use a certain type of architecture for shelters, we have different options for things like roof lines and building materials. Um, but one option I would like to discuss with you as well is there is a, a facility called, 
This particular one's called the Portland Lou. Um, these restrooms are placed predominantly in higher urban areas, but they're also very appropriate for areas that uh, don't have a lot of eyes on the site. They, um, they're designed to be essentially bulletproof. Um, they're easy to maintain, but some of the other features to them is that when we provide restroom structures like the one up here in the upper right, there become certain inherent issues with they people will transients potentially will find ways to block the doors and even though they're supposed to be locked at night they'll camp out in them uh, occasionally there's you know just activities that you don't want going on in those the the portland loo is designed to be much more pragmatic and functional but it's not a place that you're going to try and camp in or do anything like that. So they add privacy, ease of maintenance and so forth, but they're not as comfortable as, as your typical type of, of restroom. So one of the first polling questions I'd like to ask is, would you be comfortable using a Portland Loo style restroom versus a more traditional brick and mortar structure now knowing that it's easier to, to maintain and or more vandal resistant. And so, yes, no, um, not sure, no opinion. So I'll give you a moment to kind of address those polls. And here we go. Looks like we're pretty close to being there. So it looks like most people would be willing to, to incorporate something like that. Thank you. Um, okay. Get back to them. So other amenities in this area, speaking of the playground, um, again, going with kind of that theme, there's more naturalized areas here. We have a few different things to consider and you'll I'll have additional photos for another playground option in the next alternative. Uh, but just kind of keeping in mind, we can do something that's more nature based uh, using more natural materials, less uh, program type uses, you know, as opposed to here is a piece of equipment that it's got certain set things you're going to go through versus up in the upper right hand corner where you're kind of there's a little bit more imagination play those types of things one of the drawbacks to this type of playground is that in remote areas they they oftentimes can be used i mean people will take wood and chop it up or try and build a bonfire or do those types of things. So we've got to be cognizant of kind of the, the practicality of using actual natural materials. But uh, I think there's opportunities for creating some of those themes. There's the technology and playground manufacturing. There's nature-based versus actual nature play where they, they create equipment that's more um, thematic. And, and or, you know, there's different levels. So we can use some natural materials, but then incorporate more of the, uh, the manufactured product. So just things to consider as we're moving forward. Um, so the other section of the park being the community garden. Uh, this will consist of, again, additional parking, a shared, parking lot, shared restroom facilities, furnishings, kind of a small plaza area that will be shared between the off-leash area and the garden. Um, it will also have, um, for instance, ADA accessible raised beds. It has functionality for things like storing and, and maintaining compost bins and, and delivering soil material, those types of things. And we would also like to try and incorporate some of those, those attributes like edible garden type features in it, such as orchard trees and or berry bushes, those types of things. And it would be fenced not only for protection and keeping it uh, enclosed, but also trying to help 
uh, prohibit things like you know deer coming and grazing into your gardens and so forth. So um, these are just a few of the examples of some of the features that would be in there. Uh, and there may be a potential for a greenhouse, in fact. So based on that, um, uh, another question would be, if you do use the greenhouses and, and the community gardens out here, would you be willing to rent a plot inside of a greenhouse, which might kind of extend your gardening time throughout the year? So yes, no, not sure, no opinion. So, and again, looks like um, like pretty much everybody would be interested in something like that. So, thank you. So, then moving on to the, in this option, having the off-leash area. So, we're looking at approximately about a three-acre uh, off-leash area, which is pretty good size. Um, and some of the features of this would be having a, you know, a small dog area, a large dog area separately fenced. Um, there's certain attributes to them that are, are pretty much required for them to function well, having double gate entrances, some pathways, uh, each would have like a social gathering area somewhat centrally located within these spaces. So you can keep an eye on your dogs, visit with your neighbors, those types of things. And uh, another attribute would be potentially having these smaller, uh, like agility training type facilities in here. Uh, and just enhancing the area, providing some shade and site furnishings, both for the, the pedestrians, as well as to accommodate dogs. So, so speaking of that, um, just a few examples. So in the site furnishings, you know, having drinking fountains that also have dog bowls. So you don't have some area that has standing water all the time. You're just using it as you need it. Um, again, example of maybe some of the things that might go into an agility course. And one other thing in terms of the surfacing is for agility courses, um, since dogs are doing so much quick turning and sharp turns and those types of things, it can be pretty tough on them depending on what your, what your, your surfacing material is. Uh, they do have some great products out there. This one's canine grass. It's got built-in microbial type qualities that um, allow you to just come out and hose it down to clean it up, but it provides um, more consistent and better surface to, to cause less potential injuries to, to pets when they're going through that type of thing. So um, based on that, are there, are there any other off-leash area amenities that you'd like us to consider that are missing from this concept? Um, again, you could, could add them to the Q&A box if there's something specific, or if you feel like this pretty much covers, you know, what you would anticipate. Okay. Looks like everybody's pretty much now. Seems like there's enough in there, so. Okay. Um, moving on. So the last portion of the site is essentially um, enhancing the, that both the habitat and the trail system, those types of things. And overall, this site is somewhat barren out there right now, except for immediately around the pond. Um, and some of the ground cover and everything that are out there now are a lot of it is more invasive species type plant material. So in, in both options, we'll be looking at habitat restoration. Uh, both options will have things like, you know, buffering and perimeter buffering. Um, some of the amenities we would add to this is, are to, um, you know, upgrade some of the planting and so forth around the pond, do some upgrades to the existing observation deck, 
Uh, this option proposes maybe some smaller single table type shelters along the pathway. Uh, one, one recommendation has been maybe striping this paved pathway so that if you're out there with your toddler and they're on their tricycle or something like that, you kind of have your designated, pardon me, your designated area to be out of the way if somebody else is speed walking or jogging or doing whatever. Um, and then maybe again, creating some kind of a more formalized observation overlook. Um, there is currently uh, an existing birdhouse out there. We would like to relocate that. Um, so those are the kind of the basic improvements we would propose for the kind of the enhancement of the overall area. So a couple of examples. Again, here's the birdhouse that's out there currently some samples of tables and a potential overlook type feel. Uh, also, um, if there, it may warrant that we could start uh, more of an interpretive program going out there as well, whether it be for the flora and the fauna or the birds or other wildlife aspects. So, um, and speaking of that, um, one thing I'd like to hear is if you if you are using this space, are there any specific categories of birds or mammals observed in this area that we should be focusing our attention on as we uh, explore the options for improving the habitat? And if you could just kind of select all that apply, this is more for us to understand what you've seen because if you if you are out there regularly, you are more aware of what you've actually experienced out there. Let's give me another second or two. Okay, well, it looks like that's about it. Thank you. So as for the second alternative, um, it has a lot of the similar features uh, in the, again, we'll be looking at the wildlife habitat and, and improvement of landscape and so forth. This particular option has two park entries, one more dedicated to the, the main plaza area and one more dedicated to uh, community gardens. And in this option, we're looking at incorporating a demonstration garden versus an off-leash area. Um, the other thing significant about this is we're looking to try and make the pond, enhance the pond itself a little bit, make it more naturalized, expand on, on its uh, capacity, as well as maybe it becomes an extension to the pond or maybe some more wetland type habitat. Uh, it increases the size of some of the loop trails and versus having, um, versus having single shelters for picnic tables, this one would incorporate things like uh, perhaps viewing blinds. Um, the, also, the, we're adding a couple of overlook areas in this one. So reshaping the berm somewhat. So again, the plaza area, it's a little more significant playground area, we're looking at maybe some larger, more signature type features that become more of a draw to the community, make it kind of a special, more special place in that sense. Uh, basically, the same amenities as in the previous option otherwise. Um, again, just some images of some of the types of amenities that would go into that specific area of the park. And then, as I mentioned, for the playground, for instance, maybe we have this may be an opportunity to really utilize the topography and the berm that's out there, create more of the, you know, that's the park with the really big slide kind of thing going on. Um, also, again, just kind of re reinforcing and discussing that, that conversation about do we emulate nature and just make it kind of nature themed and based, or do we really want to try and get into more? Uh, natural playground building. So, uh, so based on that, now that you've seen both, 
Um, do you have a preference playground features that are more nature themed, saying the boulders and logs and so forth, or more traditional and contemporary, including things like, you know, swing sets and spinning toys and those types of things, and based on this specific site. So answering whether nature themed, traditional and contemporary, a mix of both, or no opinion. <clears throat> Looks like there's a, so far, predominantly liking the nature themed. <clears throat> Pardon me. So, okay. Um, let's see. All right, well. Uh, so we can get to the next one. So again, not a lot of different aspects to the community garden, same general location, same types of amenities that will be shared with uh, kind of the demonstration garden. Um, so not a lot of difference, just a, again, separate access to that. Um, and just a couple more images of those types of features. Again, this would be exemplary of like maybe a structure built into it for the compost and soil bins, those types of things. One of the attributes to discuss about the accessible plots is that typically we would come in with a hard, firm surface paved area for those, uh, predominantly for things like wheelchair access or very even regulated surfaces and then be able to spill off of those with uh, more soft surface things like crushed rock. Um, adjacent to the community garden, keeping in that theme, we were considering uh, something like demonstration gardens. And for this particular example, um, we would propose a pollinator garden and also a water conservation or what's known as a zero escape garden type theme. Uh, it would consist of, again, small social gathering areas. Uh, it serves the function to become kind of educational to like, for instance, a homeowner maybe wanting to go out and find out what plants would be great for their yard that don't consume a lot of water or, or attract you know, pollinators, that type of thing. So somewhat interpretive, type function, educational function, uh, having soft surface paths and so forth. Uh, and it would share the amenities such as restrooms and, and, and site furnishings with the community garden adjacent to it. And again, just a couple of examples of what this might look like, uh, some of the options for that. So, with that, that was just our first flush at this. Um, I would like to find out if there's other types of gardens that you would prefer to see in there demonstration garden wise. Um, so if you could select a couple of more of your top choices, um, butterfly garden, sensory gardens, you know, having lots of different textures and smells and so forth, um, medicinal herb garden, a children's garden, or potentially a rose garden even. While you're filling that out, one thing to understand also is these can be somewhat labor intensive for maintenance crews. So for these to work, we would also probably be looking for you know, certain organizations like does the Rotary Club want to um, maintain a rose garden or those types of things. So those are considerations we'll be making as we, as we really refine these things down as well. All right, so it's like sensory and children's gardens came in there, some for butterfly gardens as well. Okay, thank you. So lastly, again, uh, the habitat trail enhancement for this particular one. Uh, I've already kind of mentioned, we, we would enhance the trails, expand upon them somewhat, provide a couple of different overlook areas. Uh, in this particular one, 
we would potentially we would propose adding another observation deck in addition to the existing one that's here. Um, again, providing viewing blinds along here for those who are serious birders and wildlife enthusiasts, um, maintaining the birdhouse, those types of things. So, um, so again, a few images help kind of identify what the themes and these these things could do in terms of character for the area. So example, boardwalk, viewing blinds, maybe the furnishings around here become more naturalized, things like basalt column benches, observation area with interpretives. And one thing that we could potentially consider is by adding more interested in following the progress of something. Whoa. So um, that might be an option, something to, to kind of look at. So with all of that, um, having seen both of these alternatives, I'd like to ask, is there one that you generally prefer over the other? Um, being yes, alternative one, with the off-leash area and so forth, two with the expanded pond, demonstration gardens. Generally both are okay. Uh, generally don't like either one or don't have an opinion, so. Okay. Looks like alternative one seems to be, looks like there's a lot of people that kind of like the off-leash area, it seems like. So. Okay, and so then alternatively, um, are there any features from each of those two alternatives that you'd like to see combined to create a preferred alternative if it's feasible? So choosing only like one of these aspects, for instance, on to add to alternate one, the expanded pond, or reduce the off-leash area and add a small demonstration garden, or add viewing blinds, uh, something else, and or alternatively on number two, just adding individual picnic tables along the pathway, or add a small off-leash area in place of the demonstration gardens. Just another couple of seconds. All right, that's great. Thank you very much for that feedback. Um, so this kind of concludes what we've got in terms of the alternatives for Levy Pond. We'll have opportunity to have the Q and A at the end, but I would like to to go through Kappa Park alternatives now as well, so we can kind of have a, an overall discussion at the end. So, so that being said. Um, let's start with Kappa Park. Uh, Kappa Park is a property undeveloped, currently located over in the kind of northwest portion of the town. Um, it is um, approximately four acre site. It's kind of unique in that it's almost a remnant property that has been historically used for residential and was acquired by the by the parks department um, but it's kind of out of context there's not any real residential neighborhoods within probably a quarter mile or so from this property it's sandwiched in by interstate 5 as well as pacific highway it's surrounded by commercial and retail office space type uses there's motel across the street, rental stores, the Puyallup Tribe of Indians office complex to one side and like a car dealership. Um, currently, a few of the existing residential buildings have been removed. Um, more would be, I mean, ultimately, all of these buildings would be removed when it's time to develop the site. But until, until then, 
it's nice to have a, uh, a residence on there to kind of as a caretaker type visibility aspect. Uh, the site itself is a little lower than the surrounding properties. There's drainage ditches running on either side and towards this end, it's kind of poorly drained. Uh, but there are a significant number of really nice mature trees, which we would want to try and uh, take advantage of. So, oh, also there's a bus stop at this location. So looking at this and doing a little more research, um, some of the opportunities and constraints for the site are also that there, in the, in the very early works, there are some potential alignments here that might be utilized one or the other. Uh, we don't know for sure yet, but for an extension to elevated transit line alignment, uh, either through the I-5 right of way or the Pacific Highway right of way, um, we would need to relocate the entrance and expand it from being just the small single uh, residential driveway bisecting the existing bus stop uh, to a location that works better, would be less conflict. Um, we need to allevi alleviate the drainage issues, again, preserve the mature trees, and also take advantage and leverage kind of the visibility from I-5. So one of the things I'll start to talk about here is the program for this site, being that it's not in kind of a traditional park setting surrounded by neighborhoods and very ex easily accessible and so forth. This, the discussions have led to this park site probably needs to become more of a destination type park, meaning something that would, um, would enhance people to, or encourage people to get in the car and come drive here to do a specific activity, one that's likely not in your park system already. So keeping that in mind, um, the other things we heard is through our previous survey, uh, some, of the, some of the top amenities that you would be interested in, uh, one being a splash pad, but I wanted to, to mention there is currently a splash pad design occurring uh, just in the beginning stages for the aquatic center. So that, that would be the first splash pad in the city system. And so it may not be the highest use for this specific site. Some of the other items were things like rock climbing or bouldering um, and envisioning that as being probably more of a, um, a, an enclosed or covered facility. Uh, and probably need some monitoring by staff um, for liability and risk issues. Uh, also outdoor seasonally covered pool. I know Fife has a, a, a great identity as an aquatic type uh, recreational hub. And I think the desire is to continue to, to, to build on that. Uh, again, an off leash dog area, and then some things like inclusive for all playgrounds uh, and or something like a BMX pump track. Again, things that you just don't have in your system yet. Uh, one of the other things about this site specifically is safety and security was the top concern. And a lot of that is based on its context, um, you know, just the, the surroundings and people during our survey said that they didn't necessarily feel safe coming to this site. So our goal in however we program this thing and come up with a, a master plan design for it are to provide uses that get more eyes on the site. They have more abilities to monitor and secure the site and make it a safer place. So, so jumping into our first option then. So after discussions with staff and looking at other things, one of those destination type uses would be a combination of what we've what we're showing here, um, potentially putting in a mini golf course, high visibility from the highway, more people might see it, get in the back seat, let's go play mini golf, that kind of fun stuff. Um, and complementary to that, maybe having uh, batting cages and uh, you know the supporting 
infrastructure for you know concessions and rentals and and maybe a group shelter for parties those types of things and then on the the opposite end we would have more of a, a traditional park so we don't know exactly what all is going to happen in this surrounding area in the future but provided maybe more residential does start to get built in like multifamily or something like that we would want we still want to have kind of that instead of all pay to play type activities we want to have that community park aspect too that's open to all um, so with that i'm going to briefly kind of go through a little bit more of those uh, so in this end uh, this entire area would be fenced and secured including you know the fencing that consists around the, the batting cages. Um, it would be an 18 hole mini golf course, uh, have a concessions rental and restroom type facilities, uh, drop off areas, kind of main entryway to it. Um, and then as we look through these, these lighter, lighter looking trees are all existing trees that we're trying to preserve from the original site. Um, there's already existing buffering going on this edge. Uh, we're also wanting to make sure we're addressing drainage through things like the bioswales and those types of things to help move the water away from the site. And just in general, enhancing the area and providing parking. So um, then moving towards uh, and some of the amenities with that. Uh, again, the character of this being in the setting that it is would probably be a more modern contemporary type feel, you know, using more contemporary feeling type of architectural elements and so forth. Um, just a few examples of the types of features that might be associated here. This is an example of what was shown for the batting cage. So it'd be like, um, you have a card reader and you just go up and it's an automatic pitching machine and retrieves itself and does all those fun things. So, so then on the neighborhood park slash playground side of things, uh, this one has a pretty nice balance of having, you know, just natural open, unprogrammed lawn space, lots of shading already existing out there creating a an inclusive playground for two to five and and five to 12 year olds but when we talk about inclusive play areas what we're really talking about is providing a playground that provides opportunities for future people of all ages and abilities so um we're it's not just ada accessibility it's it's meeting other needs and for instance like you see the different colored safety surfacing uh, a lot of times that is used for contrast for, for instance, somebody who may be visually impaired may need some cues or some directions that, hey, I know there's a really high activity area in the green area, so I should kind of be cognizant of that before I'm just kind of wandering into that space. Um, there's all kinds of different aspects that go into it, but they're, they're wonderful to they're, they're essentially just good design. It's just it's trying to get it as as all encompassing in the design process as possible. Um, so again, some of the features, um, you know, things for high activity, um, things for, I guess, a little more docile type activity, creative play, all the different cognitive and physical amenities, you know, to promote those types of things. Um, and including, you know, things like sensory panels and music panels and abilities for, you know, multi-generational interaction, those types of, of elements. So that's what we're talking about when we, when we talk specifically about inclusive playgrounds. Um, so based on this option, uh, like you to try and rank in order as to what we've shown as amenities in here right now, what would you say would be most important in this park space overall? Um, the inclusive playground, the miniature golf course, the batting cages, or just 
you know, more of the walking pathways, park furniture type stuff. So looks like, not surprising, you know, walking pathways, park furniture, that type of stuff is pretty much the top of every survey we ever get into when it comes to park and recreation. Um, looks as though probably the least, um, least interest would be in the miniature golf course, some for the batting, batting cages and uh, also coming in kind of second would be the inclusive playground. So thank you for that. Moving on then. Uh, another question associated with that would be, so are there any alternative destination attraction type uses that you'd prefer to see other than either the mini golf or the batting cages? So for instance, the BMX pump track or a bouldering climbing kind of uh, facility or something else. Got some others, which I'll find out what those are shortly, but um, it's like others and BMX pump track um, and some for bouldering. One of the things to think about with the bouldering and the climbing is that could to a certain degree be incorporated into a playground on a smaller scale rather than a, a very specific, like a climbing gym type size of uh, bouldering and climbing. So. I will move on then. So work, that's all I have on this first one. Um, I'd like to move to the second alternative. And this alternative, we've looked at incorporating the, the outdoor swimming pool with a seasonal cover. And the way that would work is we would have some anchoring type, you know, permanent structures, and then be able to incorporate a tent structure over that, that facility. Um, it, this type of facility does require considerably more parking. There is a larger draw, but it also gets a lot more extended use in terms of, you know, doing more swim lessons later into the evenings and those types of things. So uh, we still want to incorporate a playground and we still want to try and um, retain and preserve as many of the existing trees in here as we can. So this, the playground and park area becomes more of a kind of an island in this in this sense and it's a little smaller than the previous option but it still has some of those those amenities um, so with that starting on the indoor outdoor pool area um, just a lot of the the supporting infrastructure you know everything from locker rooms to the admin offices and concession spaces and mechanical storage, all of those types of things would be included more so in the permanent structures. Um, this particular one, we're looking at the pool itself is designed to have an eight lane by 25 yard um, swimming lanes, uh, also with a shallow end and a warm up pool on either end. There's a what's known as a movable bulkhead in here, which would allow you to kind of extend this space for different times and uses. Uh, also in this one, we're looking at, it would have maybe a small lazy river that goes around the entire thing. Uh, so these are little foot bridges to get over those. Um, also looking at an attraction of a water slide. And again, this type of feature with the visibility from I-5 would, um, make this pretty a pretty visible feature on the site. And then beyond that, we would have, you know, with this type of swimming facility, we'd provide spectator seating as well as, you know, scoreboard, uh, those types of things. And then the basic amenities of furnishings and, you know, lifeguard uh, seating and all of that. And consider even maybe having some 
cabanas that might be for rent, you know? So um, again, addressing the offsite stuff, the, the bioswales, the drainage, uh, this type of facility would have a continuous, I would assume probably a continuous wall around it uh, for risk and those types of, and security. Um, and it would probably be part of the structure to incorporate the, the temporary or removable tenting structure as well. Um, then, so just a few images. These are just some of the types and potential type of structures for say the tenting facility. Um, just some of the additional amenities, the lazy river, the cabana spaces, the water slides, the furnishings, just the things you would typically see as pool amenities. Um, so then moving to the playground park area again, again, we would be looking at providing inclusive play type features, uh, accommodating the two to five and five to 12 year olds. It may not be as large or as elaborate as the previous option. Um, having you know, typical park furnishings, the picnic tables and the benches and, and that type of thing and enhanced landscape and so forth. So uh, the lawn areas in this one, if we are able to retain all as much of the trees as possible would be more of a shady type environment rather than having the op more open, sunny, open lawn type facility. Um, some of the kind of the character that might come into this park is whether we go with more of this, this contemporary, modern, more art feeling type structures, something um, just more modern towers and slides, more um, what are composite structures is the word, word I'm looking for rather than a lot more of the individual components spread throughout the park. Um, could still bring in things that are a little bit more artistic, but still have you know, that playful theme to flowers and providing shade and so forth. And as I mentioned before, it could be a composite structure that has more of a climbing rock type attributes to it. So trying to maximize the the recreational opportunities as much as possible in, in a smaller space. So with that, um, now that you've seen both of these alternatives, is there one that you generally, generally prefer over the other? So the first one being with the mini golf and batting cages or the second one with the swimming pool, playground. All right, it looks like predominantly the swimming pool and playground. So, so at this point, that uh, these two concepts are, are obviously a little less involved programmatically than say the, the levee pond. There's fewer individual features to go through. So we've gotten through those pretty, pretty rapidly. But um, just, a, just so that everyone understands, the information we're getting back from you will be assessing, discussing with uh, the city and other stakeholders and folding it into additional information from uh, surveys and, and everything else that we've heard. So this is a piece of the pie, but it's a very important piece of the pie and we really appreciate your involvement in this. Um, Again, these are master plans, so they're going to add a, uh, act as a guide for you know how do they want to in the future as funding and things like that are available to proceed. And so it's it's that that guideline. So we're not we're not we haven't presented things that are just going to be specifically right off the shelf. We showed you that image, and if you come back and it finally gets built and well, that's a different kind of playground or something like that. So just giving you a heads up on that, there's a lot of factors, um, cost being one of the predominant ones, obviously, but um, 
So that's the end of the presentation. And so at this point, I would like to um, just open up conversations for, for the Q&A. And as part of that, I'll probably ask Chris to kind of help with. Um, yeah, th th thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, at this point in the presentation, we'd like to open it up. If you have any questions or comments, you can use the, the Q&A function uh, that's down on the bottom of your screen to um, ask any questions or make any comments. I, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll start out by asking a question. I know on uh, polling question 10, there were a couple of other answers um, regarding um, other alternative destination attractions that you'd like to see other than mini golf or batting cages. So curious if folks um, would like to share what other um, destination attractions they'd like to see uh, uh, at Kappa Park. Great. And of course, feel free to ask any other questions as well. So uh, the first question is um, for someone that missed the levee pond part of the presentation. Um, yes, this um, will this whole presentation will be posted online on the city's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we hope to get that up uh, early next week. We're shooting for Monday, so you can look for it sometime then. But that, that's a great question. Thank you. Anything else? Getting some support for an outdoor pool. <laughs> Thank you for that comment, Sarah. I'm glad you appreciated the presentation. Hopefully, um, in the future, you'll be able to see some of this in real life. Yeah, thank you everybody for taking your time. I know it's a, it is it's sometimes tough to jump into these things after being at work all day and so forth, but we do appreciate your participation. I'm not seeing any additional questions, Jim. I know you have a couple more slides, so maybe we'll should we uh, run through those and then uh, once you wrap that up, if see if there's any final thoughts, and then we'll. We'll close it out for the evening. Absolutely, thank you. Um, so, I uh, just want to make you aware there is, uh, as Chris mentioned, we will be posting information as well as other information um, related to the pros plan and these two um, master plans, which are a, a subset of that pros plan effort. So those are available on the websites. Um, and then in terms of what's next, um, we're going to assess what we've heard, um, again, accumulating all the information that we've done to date, have discussions with, with the city, uh, stakeholders and so forth, and develop some, a couple of preferred final master plans, one for each of these two sites. Um, we're going to have those ongoing discussions with the Parks and Rec Board uh, and everybody else who has a, an interest in this. And then we are hoping to have those master plans completed by the, um, the end of this year and have them adopted in whatever, whatever uh, format they need to be adopted um, by probably sometime in January or so. So that is, that's what's next. So keep an eye out and I'm sure we'll keep you informed if there's another, another presentation or anything like that. Uh, meanwhile, uh, that is it for this evening. And I really appreciate your time and all the help from everyone. And thank you very much. 
All right. And we did have one final question. Question: I think it relates to when when we are likely to see uh, Kappa turned into a park. Um, and Megan, I don't know if you if you want to um, address that. Yep, I actually just answered that online. Um, it's a tough question because funding for a park always comes down to available funding. So we are shooting for hopefully within the next five years. Um, but funding can be tough and there's a lot of parks that are um, fighting for available grant funds. So for instance, Brookville Park was our latest park that opened in August of 2018. And that park cost about 10 million to build. And so you can understand there's a definite planning process that goes into this. Um, while it's great to come up with the park master plan, we also need to use those park master plans to um, secure available grant funding as well. It's a great question. All right, everyone. Well, thanks again so much for joining us this evening and listening to our presentation. Um, and we will uh, uh, see you again sometime soon, hopefully. And uh, again, all this information will be on the website and online and available. And oh, there's sorry, there's one more question. I think Megan just answered it, but um, I don't know, Megan, if you want to answer it orally as well, but. Yeah, I, the question isn't showing for me now since I answered it, but essentially is this park just going after grant funds or will it go out to bond? And a lot of that will be up to our city council and the direction that they would like to go with it. Um, you know, going out to bond is a big ask for taxpayers. And so that's something that would warrant a further discussion. All right, well, that's a great way to end our presentation for this evening. And again, thank you all so much for joining us and have a great rest of your evening. Bye-bye. Thank you.